Joining us now is Brad McMillan, Chief Investment Officer at Commonwealth Financial. And while we watch these gains today in U.S. markets, is this a dead cat bounce? Because we've watched Asia. I mean, they, they opened in China after the end of their holiday, and we saw the expected sell-off. But when would they really expect to turn around? I don't think this is a dead cat bounce. I think the markets are trying to get a grip on what's going on, and there are really two things. First of all, we've seen it spread much faster than we've seen in the past, and that's a bad thing, and markets are reacting to that. But the reality is the policy response is much better this time around. Is it spreading faster, or do we just have much more visibility? So I think there's a real chance. It's not as bad as it actually looks. And then when you look at the much lower mortality, I think markets are taking a wait and see. I mean, we're only down about 2%, and that's a reasonable adjustment here. So, Brad, what should investors be doing then as we head throughout this period? Pretty much nothing. This is something, again, we're going to have some short-term volatility. I think the comparison with SARS is instructive. You know, we saw a little bit of short-term volatility, but from a fundamental perspective, the U.S. exposure to China is simply not that large. So the U.S., we have a solid economy, and that's what drives the market. So I'm setting it out. So, Brad, maybe this isn't a dead cap bounce, but is it a short-term head fake, what we're seeing in the markets today? I'm thinking over the next couple of weeks, you could see some downside risk from some of the data. You know, the ISM data was okay, but uh, I suspect a lot of this economic data will start to reflect uh, the coronavirus. And that's exactly the right approach, is simply to say, okay, we're going to see this in the data. But even when you look at the data, okay, we've got some cushion. We just saw manufacturing come in at an expansionary level for the first time in, you know, months. We've seen consumer confidence bounce back. And so when you look at all of that, I don't see a tremendous amount of damage. And again, I think this is mostly noise. It could get worse. We'll keep an eye on it. But I'm going to be watching the data to see if it actually changes exactly as you said. You know, one of the uh, perversive benefits of all of this is the destruction in the price of oil. Is that going to be a uh, tailwind for a lot of at least, you know, stocks and manufacturers here in the United States? Or is that pretty much not something that you can take into the equation? I think cheaper oil always helps put money in people's pockets. That's certainly going to help. Key, even if we get a pullback in confidence from the virus, from fear, we're going to see people filling up their tanks and feeling better about that. But I think there's a broader point here, which is that what happens when the risk from the virus goes away? I mean, we're seeing this. We have all the impeachment concern. That'll be done likely this week. What happens when that goes away? We see Brexit. So I think this actually, certainly it's a short-term hail tail short-term headwind. But once again, this could turn into a tailwind once people decide that, no, the world really isn't coming to an end. So let's go to economic data for a moment. We've definitely had some mixed economic data points, particularly on manufacturing, although the ISM uh, index today came in better than estimated and showed a little bit of expansion in sharp contrast with the Chicago PMI that we got last week that was pretty negative. Um, what are you watching most closely on the economic front? I look at manufacturing production. We're up two months in a row. Not great, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. But then we see, we see the ISM manufacturing come back, and that's great. But I think the bigger picture here, what I spend, what I think is a better indicator, you look at housing. Housing is one of the purest indicators of consumer confidence. You're not going to get a 30-year mortgage. You're not going to commit to that unless you feel good. And certainly, we've seen housing sales at levels we haven't seen since 2006 in some cases. There's something going on with the population. People are feeling good. And as long as consumer spending keeps going, we're in good shape. But when you say housing is uh, something going on, isn't that more regional? I mean, like in places like the Northeast, housing faces the high tax burden that maybe three years ago it wouldn't. And in other places, it's an affordability issue. Absolutely true, but that has always been the case and that always will be the case. You know, real estate is inevitably local. But at the national level, nonetheless, people, despite all that, are still buying. And that says to me, again, you, I think one of the key demographic drivers here may be millennials are finally starting to pull the trigger. Given low interest rates, given that housing affordability has gotten better with the lower rates, they're saying now is the time. And that's actually what I'm hearing from some of my colleagues at my office. 
All right, Brad McMillan, thank you for joining us here on The Move. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.